a huge mood to the herd, and welcome. I hope you're doing well. So after playing World of Warcraft since release day in Europe, I found myself spending less and less time in Azeroth, as the levels of enjoyment I once had are no longer there. So this series is going to be a journal of my experiences playing Final Fantasy. It's not going to be a review of the game or anything like that, instead it's going to be about me finding my way throughout this world. Now a spoiler warning, as I'm going to be playing through the game you're going to see potential story outcomes and reveals, so please bear that in mind when you are watching, as I don't want to ruin any surprise for people. So welcome to episode 2 of my Final Fantasy XIV journal. Now I will admit that after playing World of Warcraft for such a long time, there is a certain mindset that is established, and usually you want to rush through all of the early game and level up to max level as quickly as possible, as that is where you will find the content. Everything before that is just a chore you have to get through to get to the juicy stuff. However, this is not the case for Final Fantasy XIV, as there is so much content available, even in the starter zone, that you really do not need to burn towards max level. In fact, I will openly admit, I have no idea what max level is in this game. Now, as there is so much content to do in these early stages, I needed a goal to work towards, otherwise I'm going to find myself standing around looking at the awesome mounts and stunning scenery all day. So I've set myself the task of getting all of the jobs available in this zone up to level 15. This leads on to something I find fantastic with Final Fantasy, and that is there are so many different ways you can get the necessary experience required to level up each job. To make things easier on you, Final Fantasy provides you with a recommendations list for each zone you're in, listing available quests, and mobs to kill, etc. This is a great quality of life thing, especially if you're trying to tick off everything available in a zone. The first one that I came across was the Hunting Journal. This is a list of monsters for each class that you need to go off and kill. As you complete each task in the journal, you get bonus experience, and you even get more experience if you complete all of the tasks within a section. While this may sound a bit grindy, you're not being asked to kill hundreds of mobs. Instead, it's three or four of each at these levels, which you may find you're actually doing in the course of completing quests anyway. There is also an abundance of side quests, which are small and quite quick to do, and whilst the rewards and experience are not that high, especially if you've outleveled them, they do feed into the overall feeling of your character making a difference to Gridania. You also have Fates, which are events that occur within an area. These seem to be ranged from killing a number of mobs that spawn to taking down a named mob. All players in the area can take part in them, and you get reward based on your contribution. One thing that I unlocked were levies, and I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. And these are a very interesting way of boosting your experience and getting rewards. So the requirements vary based on whether it's a battlecraft levy, tradecraft levy, or fieldcraft levy. For the battlecraft one, you head to the designated area on your map and initiate the event. You then kill off the required mobs, or collect the required amount of items, or whatever is required. I even had one where I had to do a soothing mode to each mob once I'd gotten its health down. Each of these has to be done within a set amount of time, and you can't leave the zone once you've started it, otherwise it is cancelled. Once you hand it in, you get experience and rewards for the class you are playing. The tradecraft levies require you to craft items and deliver them to people. The great thing about these I found was I was able to grab all the levies for the professions I had, craft up the items, and then go off and deliver the items and awarded me experience for the profession that crafted the item, even though I had my class activated. Levies are also repeatable, so it appears to be a great way of getting experience and items towards all of your jobs, although I'm not sure how many times you can repeat them a day, so this is something we'll have to explore further. Speaking of tradecraft, I added carpentry and leatherworking to my list of available jobs, and again, much in the same way botany is more involved than just hacking away at resource nodes, crafting is the same. I love the fact that I can improve the quality of an item, but I have to balance that against actually crafting the item itself, as if I run out of actions then the item will be ruined. And as I level up in the crafting jobs, I get more skills to help produce higher quality items. I'm not sure if crafted gear is actually of much use, especially in early, in early game, but I have to say I've enjoyed levelling up the professions. One of the things I was looking forward to was the fact you could be every class on one character. So after spending a bit of time getting my Lancer up to level 15, mainly through following the main story quests and a few side quests, I went off to get the other two class available in Gradania. As with the Lancer, each class has their own quest and story attached to them, and this just 
sorry, this just highlights how deep this game is. At no point when I was playing did I feel I was just going through the motions. I found myself spending time reading quest dialogues and taking interest in why I was doing the things I was doing. So the two classes I've added to my character are the Archer, a ranged DPS, which I didn't really spend too much time playing, and the Conjurer, who is a healing class. Now, having played healing classes a lot in WoW, one thing I found that the leveling experience for them can be very painful. My first character back in vanilla was a Restoration Druid, and I still have the painful memories of how slow it was to reach level 60. In terms of offense, you start with, off with one spell, and as you increase in levels, you get a damage over time as well. The rest of your spells, as you would expect, are centered around healing. I personally did not find it as slow to complete quests as I expected. Yes, battles with mobs were a bit longer than with the Lancer, and as the spells have cast time, you find yourself having to cancel a cast so you can get out of the way of a special attack. But you can still make progress at a steady pace. Now, this is probably my first observation of leveling up multiple classes, and that is it takes a lot longer to level up a class if you're not doing the main story quests. You do get an experience boost based on the difference between your highest level class and the one you're leveling, but despite doing lots of levies and side quests, the journey to level 15 for the Conjurer is very slow. Now, this could be because I'm missing something, or it could just be my lack of experience with the game. So if you have any tips on what I should be doing further, then please leave them in the comments section below. So one of the reasons I want to get my Conjurer and Archer to level 15 is so that I can access something that one of the commentators mentioned in my previous episode, the Halls of the Novice. This is something I wish more MMOs would include, especially for people like me who really could do with all the help they can get. It's a series of guided challenges that take you through things you need to be aware of when taking part in group content, and in fact just playing in general. For my Lancer, it included avoiding attacks, assisting allies in taking down targets in order, positioning, and even interacting with the environment to prevent being overwhelmed by ads. It concluded with a final challenge where you put all the things that you've done in the previous exercises together in a mini encounter. The great thing is you get some really nice gear as a reward for the exercises, and a nice ring that gives you plus 30% experience up to level 30. So I'm looking forward to getting my Conjurer up to level 15 to see what the healer exercises are like. I know this is probably a silly thing, but I discovered Choco Bow Porters for getting between different zones, and they are awesome. I love the music that is playing as you travel between the zones. It has almost a 60s western style to it, and the Choco Bows themselves look great, especially little Porter's hats. With all these jobs I've access to and the need to switch between them, I'm grateful that Final Fantasy has a great gear set system. I can equip the gear for a job, save it, and even drag a button to my action bar, meaning I can quickly switch between gear sets. That, coupled with the suggested gear option and the armory storage, means managing gear is really easy. However, it did take me a bit of time to discover the update gear set button on my character screen, allowing me to replace the old gear with my latest and greatest upgrades. This brings me to a second observation. With the fact that managing gear is so easy to do, I don't seem to be paying much attention to the different types of gear, and I wonder if that is going to impact me as I progress through the game. I am even find it now when I'm selecting quest rewards, as I don't know whether what I'm selecting is better than what I already have, or what impact the stats have on each of my jobs. So again, if anyone has any advice on this, please leave it in the comments section. So despite playing for 6 hours solid in this episode, I'm still in the starting zone, and still have a ton of stuff to do. So far, I've not found myself getting bored at all. So please, if you have any advice or suggestions of what I should be looking out for or focusing on, leave them in the comments section below. I do try and read all of them, and it will help me immensely. So, until the next time, have a great day.